हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन द लास्ट पार्ट वी हैव डिस्कस द डिफरेंट मेथड्स ऑफ कंट्रासेप्शन इन दैट वी हैव डिस्कस डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ आईयूटी नेचुरल मेथड बैरियर मेथड एटसेट्रा इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द एसटीडी और सेक्सुअली ट्रांसमिटेड डिजीजेस सो व्हाट आर द सेक्सुअली ट्रांसमिटेड डिजीजेस दैट आर कॉज्ड बाय द सेक्सुअल कांटेक्ट so in case of std they generally uh, can be of various type it can be caused by bacteria it can be caused by viruses fungus protozoans etc so all these diseases actually are transmitted by the common method that is normally it is std but sometime in some cases sometime also it can cause by transfusion of blood okay so first of all let's just see what is actually the uh, sexually transmitted disease first of all this causes are this diseases are caused by transmission of genital fluid so only during the sexual contact this disease is can occur these diseases are also known as pid this is also known as pelvic inflammatory disease this is also called as venereal disease this is also called as venereal disease or simply in abbreviation we can call this is as b d venereal disease or the same sexually transmitted diseases that can be called as r t i r t i means it is also called as reproductive tract infection so the same std we can call this is also as pid pelvic inflammatory diseases some of the diseases actually can cause inflammation in the pelvic region it will include the the different parts in the reproductive system it is also called as venereal disease or vd and also it can be called as r ti or also it can be called as reproductive tract infection see all of these diseases they are caused by the different type of uh, pathogens so what those pathogens include this can be bacteria this can be viruses too as well as fungus protozoa etc so these are caused by different type of causative organism it include the bacteria virus protozoa fungus etc now how many diseases that can be treatable is it possible that we can treat the diseases yes we can treat the diseases but yes prevention is better than cure so that's why most important thing that how to prevent it so for the prevention of the std sexually transmitted diseases we should take different methods of contraceptive most important method of contraceptive to avoid or to get uh, avoid this type of diseases that is std is basically a uh, different type of barriers those barriers will include the male in case of male male condoms in case of female uh, female condoms are also available so normally the barrier method can be more effective most effective against this std so just see some of the diseases here yeah most of the diseases can be treatable it can be treated if it is de detected in the earlier stage but yes lots of diseases are here included that are not treatable or we cannot able to treat it once that individual gets that disease the individual will show the symptoms or it can be life threatening too so what are the diseases which is not curable see except except hiv aids next genital herpes and hepatitis b so except this disease three disease aids genital herpes and 
hepatitis B. The rest of all of the diseases can be curable. But what happened in um, basically suppose an individual is suffering from any of the diseases, they normally go to the doctor and visit and take the treatment. But if it comes to reproductive system, uh, normally the people don't go or they feel hesitation and that's why they, if they go also, they go in a very later phases. So if they go in the extreme cases, maybe it is life threatening, it may ultimately damage the multiple organs. So that's why in earlier stages, uh, they should actually go visit a doctor and can advise, uh, can take the advice from the doctors and take the uh, precautions. So what is happening? So what type of uh, symptoms can be appeared and what are the causes? All of these things we should know. Then only we can understand that yes, this is a no disease and or this is a normal condition. So we will see all of the type of diseases, their causative organism, their symptoms and if it is possible, we will see the treatment. So let's just start with the bacterial diseases. Let us start with the different type of diseases. In the first category, we will start with the bacterial disease. So the first bacterial disease here is the disease Chlamydia and this Chlamydia is caused by the causative organism that is Chlamydia trachomatis. Remember in the scientific name, in question suppose uh, it is asked what is the causative organism, you have to underline separately Chlamydia trachomatis. So first of all, we will see the symptoms. What are the different symptoms? In case of male, in case of male, the symptoms will include painful urination or in some cases it in suppose uh, the time will increase as the time passes then start to uh, from the pain is actually the yellow discharge uh, start to re release so these are the cases that is in case of male painful urination occurs and the thick pus like discharge yellow discharge that start to release from the penis in case of female in case of female generally it can cause inflammation inflammation in the fallopian tube or uterus or cervix first of all what happened it caused only inflammation but later on it completely uh, cause inflammation throughout the whole reproductive system that means it can extend to the ovary too and whenever it extends to the ovary then maybe it can cause sterility also in case of the female now just see what happens if it is coming to the treatment yes the bacterial diseases that can be treated by the antibacterial substances now what is the antibacterial uh, substances or antibiotic uh, we use the term ant antibiotic normally what is the antibiotic antibiotic are just uh, some type of chemicals they are released by the bacteria or the funguses which can be taken for killing the another type of bacteria. Now in this case, what happens, some type of chemicals are released from suppose some of the bacteria, that chemicals are extracted, we make some antibiotic and whenever it is suppose, it, um, suppose taken by the individual, it can, it can kill that bacteria. So in this case, see this chlamydia that can be treated with two types of antibiotic. So what are those antibiotic? Tetracycline and erythromycin. No Normally, uh, one very famous antibiotic we know that is penicillin. What happened in case of penicillin? See, in case of this disease that is chlamydia, penicillin do not work. Very much important, remember that here in case of chlamydia, penicillin do not work. Penicillin is not taken as an antibiotic. It is not actually effective. Other than this tetra, uh, that tetracycline and erythromycin that can be used as an antibiotic. Remember what are the antibiotic? Antibiotics are nothing but these are caused by the bacteria and the funguses. Those chemicals can uh, can kill or can destroy the another bacteria. So these are the antibiotics remember. Now after that let us see the next bacterial disease that is gonorrhea. Next disease is gonorrhea. So what happened in this case in case of gonorrhea the causative organism is Neisseria gonorrhea. So first of all what happened in case of male and the female see 
in case of male it can cause inflammation of the urinogenital tract it can cause first of all um, inflammation in the urethra also as well as in the accessory glands up to the accessory glands it can cause inflammation and also while urinating that male can feel the burning sensation so these are the some symptoms in case of male but in case of female this is not at all uh, very much prevalent why because basically the female suffer from arthritis so arthritis is a very common or uh, some another type of condition where normally that um, female will not think about the rep uh, STD or any type of reproductive problem. So she can suffer from steril, uh, first of all arthritis and in extreme cases that bacteria can cause uh, sterility that means the uterus as well as the fallopian tube will be not able to or it's incapable of uh, uh, implantation process and the fetal development so what happened in the uh, region of the uterus and the cervix region the whole bacteria develop it its colony so what happened first of all these are the cases that can happen in case of female see in case of this disease the mother if suppose during pregnancy the female suffer from this condition gonorrhea then it can also affect the baby what happened in case of the baby it can cause neonatal ophthalmia what happened whenever the baby uh, just get parturited outside that means from the birth canal whenever the baby get ejected out then from in that birth canal region actually that gonorrhea bacteria that is Neisseria gonorrhea can infect the eye and most of the cases the baby uh, can suffer from uh, suppose uh, blindness or eye defects so this is the condition that is neonatal or also we can call as genococcal ophthalmia but yes there are some uh, available treatment is there that if suppose the mother is detected having gonorrhea in the pregnancy just after parturition the baby's eye can be rinsed with 1% silver nitrate 1% silver nitrate can be used to treat that this uh, condition that the eye the baby's eye will be just given a drop or few drops of silver nitrate one person silver nitrate only then the uh, gonorrhea uh, that bacteria that is Neisseria gonorrhea can not affect the baby's eye so that is about their symptom now just see the treatment normally in the treatment uh, ampicillin and penicillin now in this case penicillin can be yes yes tetracycline can also be used tetracycline can also be used and uh, in this disease that is gonorrhea so that is about the treatment ampicillin also penicillin as well as tetracycline can cause uh, can actually treat that gonorrhea but pre as prevention is better than cure so that's why to stop contaminating the partner uh, one should use the barrier method or the condom so let's just see the next type of bacterial disease next disease after gonorrhea is syphilis this is also one bacterial disease now to see what is the causative organism causative organism is Tryponema pallida what happens in that disease first of all the symptoms include that actually the symptoms will be divided into three parts first of all the primary stage then secondary stage and after that the tertiary stage first of all one thing you have to note this this uh, Tryponema pallidum this is transplacental so what is transplacental that this actually can transmit through the placenta and also it can affect the baby so what happened in the primary stage in the primary stage very small uh, source can appear in the genitals as well as in the lips in the mouth actually in the lips uh, some small hard dry type of source that can appear but what happened after some time gradually what happened first of all it was dry now in the secondary stage what happened in the secondary stage 
around the sores, the skin start to swell. Inflammation occurs. So in the secondary stage, what happened? Uh, in that source, in the region of the sore, where actually the sore, uh, sore was there in the genitals as well as in the lips, around that, the skin start to get fluid filled as well as that start to get more, um, more inflammatory as well as it uh, can actually get more and more swell. But in later cases, in the secondary stage itself, it start to go to the blood vessel and once it go to the bloodstream, it transfer to the different organs, internal organs. Various organs can be damaged in the tertiary stage. So in the tertiary stage, what happened? Lots of multiple organ failure can occur. And in that ter ter tertiary stage itself, it can cause also mental disorder. So what happened? In case of suppose the female, the pregnant female, if she is supposed somehow attain the tertiary stage, it can go to the baby also. And in suppose the mother, it start to spread to the internal organ, it start to damage the internal organ. Then also in the baby, similar type of symptoms will appear. That means in case of baby also, you will also have the mental uh, disorder as well as the multiple organ failure. So this is actually one very serious disease. In that disease, ultimately the female as well as the baby can die in the tertiary stage once it go to the tertiary stage but yes there are treatments so normally the simple penicillin can be used as a proper antibiotic so once it has been taken in the earlier stage remember in case of diastasis that can be curable that can be treatable but yes that should be in the earlier stage that means in case of syphilis suppose the female do not go to the uh, suppose uh, primary stage or secondary stage in a tertiary stage it starts to take penicillin it will not gonna uh, actually cure or treat but in the primary stage once it goes then that can be properly treated. So yes, in the treatment, another antibiotic is used that is penicillin. After that, let us see the viral diseases. So under the viral diseases, we are not going to discuss we are not going to discuss the different types of uh, actually the treatment because in the viral disease it is very much difficult to uh, treat so that's why before that uh, pathogen enters inside the body before that once uh, one individual should get vaccinated or immunized so first of all let us see the viral diseases the first disease is the First disease is hepatitis B. What is the causative organism? That is HBV or it is also called as hepatitis B virus. There is no specific uh, scientific name here. It is HBB only. So you don't have to underline anything. So this is the causative organism hepatitis B virus. This is a double-stranded DNA virus. That means the genetic material in this virus that is a DNA and that DNA is double stranded. Now to see what happened in this case, first of all, what are the symptoms? So what happened first of all, that individual will have very mild symptoms like nausea and vomiting. Nausea can be normally happen, the individual can think about uh, the condition that it is just due to the climatic change happen or vomiting that is occurring due to suppose any abdominal problem. But what happened gradually, the individual start to develop another condition that is jaundice. So what happened in jaundice? The concentration of bilirubin and biliverdin increases. So what happened in, uh, suppose the liver, liver get affected by this virus, hepatitis B virus, it affect the liver. Gradually what happens, see one thing, liver that perform a number of functions, already you got in first year, that liver, liver normally help in fat digestion, it release that bile juice. Next thing, it help in storage of the glycogen as well as the different type of fat soluble vitamins, all of this things are start to store 
Now, different type of clotting proteins that will be also released by the same liver. But what happened once that individual suffer from that condition, disease, this virus start to affect the liver. Liver start to release that pigment bilirubin and bilirubin increase. And whenever bilirubin bilirubin start to increase in the blood, normally what happened? It's maybe the jaundice, but another condi condition can also be appeared that the main cause of jaundice is also hepatitis B. So normally the fat digestion will be affected, storage of this glycogen as well as the vitamins that will be also affected. The clotting proteins start to get affected that start to decrease. And in extreme cases, what happens? It can cause liver cirrhosis. What is liver cirrhosis? What happens? See, if that virus start to kill that uh, cells that are known as hepatocytes. So hepatocytes, whenever it gets killed by that virus, gradually in that dead cell region, the white fiber, fibrous tissue that is collagen fiber, start to replace those cells. So what happened in the liver, suppose this region, this is suppose the liver and in that liver we know already that hepatic globules are there. In that hepatic globule what we have the liver cells or hepatocytes. So this is suppose the liver hepatic lobule in that we have numbers of hepatic cells or the hepatocytes they get degenerated by this hepatitis b virus now so in that region what happened the uh, that part that part where the hepatocytes get actually killed or destroyed by this virus what happened in that region white fibrous tissue or that collagen fibers start to replace that region and whenever it replace that region that gets more and more thicker and hardened so that region actually gets stiff also and this is uh, the condition that is liver cirrhosis and once it get completely fibrous then completely liver damage occurred and uh, in liver damage the individual will not survive yes this is one extreme case that liver can damage and uh, last case liver failure occur which can lead to death of the individual and yes there is another condition also that individual will have arthritis too so normally that individual can have arthritis also the individual may not able to understand that what may be the reason of arthritis but yes the arthritis is also a symptom of that same virus hepatitis b virus or hbv now what are the diagnosis see diagnosis this once came in exam neat exam that what is the diagnosis that is known as australian antigen test and this is also in general nowadays this is written this is called as hbs antigen that means hepatitis b antigen so in that case what happened that individual will get will get this test and once it get this test in this stage the uh, virus see suppose this is the virus on the surface of the virus some protein part is present and that protein part can be diagnosed and once it is diagnosed what happened our body whenever it enters inside our body our body will start to produce that antibody so what happened this Australian antigen test was just a term earlier it was used nowadays it is used as HBS antigen or it is also called as hepatitis hepatitis B surface antigen so this is the test it is also written as HI uh, this hepatitis B surface as sometimes it is written in capital and sometimes it is written in small then these are the now normally we nowadays will call this test as HPS antigen now just see to treat that disease C it is not possible that we can treat that condition hepatitis B but before that individual can suffer or once that individual will suffer from that disease then the vaccine will not able to work so before that individual get or uh, catch by th that condition or that HIV sorry uh, hepatitis B what is the vaccine available 
See, in that vaccine actually, what is given? One immunoglobulin. You know already what is immunoglobulin. So immunoglobulin is nothing but the antibodies. So antibodies will be just injected in the body. First of all, that can vaccine that will be given in three different doses. First dose that will be suppose on the zero day. That means on the first day whenever he takes that uh, suppose immunoglobulin. After that, after one month of the initial injection of that vaccination, he will get the another uh, dose. That means after one month. After one month. That means one month later that individual have to take the next vaccine. And after that, the third dose will be taken after six months. So this way, three vaccines will be given. And in that vaccine, what is present, that will be normally simply antibody. And that antibody, if it is taken in three doses, it will give immunization, uh, immunization for lifetime. Now, what is happening? What type of immunity it will give? See, the type of immunity is passive immunity. Now, what is passive immunity? Passive immunity, there are two types of immunity we have. One is active immunity, another is passive immunity. In active immunity, what happened? This is actually just the opportunistic disease. In this opportunistic disease, we suddenly get this virus, suppose our many bacteria, our body do not get anything. Naturally, our immune system produce antibody and kill it kill that virus or bacteria or any pathogen. So that type of immunity is known as active immunity where from uh, outside you don't have to take anything. You will be naturally get um, immunized. So that is active immunity. Now in this case, this vaccination that will provide actually passive immunity. Passive immunity means before you get infected, Antibodies will be injected inside your body. So whenever those antibodies will be natural, suppose present earlier, then what happened in real suppose in future those antigens will enter inside your body. The antibody which is present in that vaccine you have taken suppose 10 years ago, that antibody will be present inside your body and that antibody will fight against that antigen. So it will provide immunity for lifetime but you have to take these three doses. But if you somehow take only two of the doses or one doses, that will not give you immunity later. So that's why in vaccination, three uh, vaccines, three doses of that vaccine, you have to take first of all, first day. Then after that uh, dose, first dose, after one month, you have to take the second dose. And after third, uh, six months, you have to take the third dose. And this way you will get uh, passive immunity. This is the disease hepatitis B. After that, let us see the next type of viral disease that is AIDS. AIDS, this is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. What is the causative organism of that disease? AIDS acquired immunodeficiency syndrome that is HIV. So causative organism here is HIV, human immunodeficiency virus. So what is happening in that case? See, for the first time, that, uh, that disease that was detected in USA in 1981. So some history also you have to know that in 1981 for the first time the first case HIV patient was detected in USA and in 1986, 1984 sorry in 1984 in India in Chennai actually for the first time the HIV patient was detected. So in India it is Chennai where the first HIV patient was detected. Now, what type of virus is that? The virus is a single-stranded RNA virus. So, this is a single-stranded RNA virus.
Now to see what happened, our genetic material, this is DNA, all of us we know about that uh, genetic material, our genetic material is DNA and that virus, that virus have the genetic material RNA. So how is it possible that a different virus with a different genetic material can cause disease in case of our body human virus, how it can become a human virus. So just see, we have a central dogma that is DNA that undergo transcription to produce RNA that is mRNA and this mRNA undergo translation to produce protein C. For the process of synthesis of protein, we have a universal process that is the genetic material DNA undergo a process that is transcription process and it produce a messenger RNA. That messenger RNA undergo translation and after that it produce the protein. So this is known as central dogma C. What happened in that central dogma? This is the only way how the protein can be synthesized. So what happened? <clears throat> Their genetic material is RNA. If it need to infect a human cell, they have to convert it into DNA. Then only it is possible that it can produce the uh, uh, protein that is the viral protein. So how this structure, the uh, virus, how it actually look like? See. This is the genetic material which is present in two strand, the single stranded virus and around that it is going to have a protein coat. So it is going to have a capsid, capsid or coat. This is made up of protein. So it is going to have a protein coat. Actually it's a double layer structure. It is going to have two layer structure, the outer layer, this is a protein coat or protein capsid where the genetic material is RNA. So this is a single stranded RNA which is now present in two strands. Separately the single stranded RNA is present. Along with that it is also going to have a, a very important enzyme. So what is that enzyme? This enzyme is reverse transcription reverse uh, sorry reverse transcriptase so reverse transcriptase is the enzyme present in the virus body so that whenever it enters inside our body it undergo reverse transcription just see this is the structure i will say i will tell you in detail actually how the life cycle will be completed in our body now this viral uh, this capsid or the protein outer layer, it is going to have one antigenic glycoprotein. So here outside it is going to have an antigenic site. Antigenic site means it is showing the antigenic property because of what our body can respond and our immune system produce the antibody. Now this structure, this is the glycoprotein 120. So this is the GP120 which is present above the surface area. So if this is an antigenic site present above the virus capsid, then to fight against that antigen, our body will produce the antibody. Then how is it actually not possible that our body can produce antibody? Because this GP120 which is an antigenic site, it is covered by it is covered by one non-antigenic substance that means actually it can mimic not to be an antigen okay so above the surface area <clears throat> of that virus HIV virus it is going to have the antigenic site so if suppose the outer layer the GP120 do not have any membrane or a coat or a covering then it will be very easy that we can able to detect that virus and we can able to produce antibody against it but it is not possible why because the GP120 which is an antigenic site this antigenic site will be covered by a non-antigenic uh, covering so that if it enters inside your body it will be not even detected as an antigen and this 
covering that will be removed for a very small period of time whenever it infect our cell then only it is for very few small period of time only that outer layer that actually uh, remove and after that it enters inside the cell now inside our body which cell is getting affected or that virus hiv virus which is actually the cell that hiv virus actually enters so that cell actually in our body is helper t cell see our immune system is going to be divided into two parts. One is humoral immunity, another is cell mediated immunity. In humoral immunity, we produce the antibodies, uh, like the, that antibodies, they are the immunoglobulins. And the cell mediated immunity, in the cell mediated immunity, we have the different type of cells like B lymphocyte and the T lymphocyte. So now here actually this is the T helper cell. That T helper cell will be actually helper cell. Why it is helper cell? Because it gives stimulation to the anti, uh, actually the B lymphocyte so that it can produce the antibody. Now this is suppose the T helper cell. Okay, so just see, suppose this is the T helper cell. Now, how it will enter? See, our cell, this is cell and this is our nucleus. In that helper cell, our genetic material is DNA, right? So, what is happening in case of that? The virus, whenever it infects the T helper cell, then for very small period of time, that surface from the GP120 that covering which is non-antigenic that shed for a very small period of time and once it shed the outer covering above the GP120 readily after that it enter so what happened this is suppose the virus that virus covering that is GP120 covering that will shed and readily after that this RNA enters and it is not only the RNA along with that it also allow the reverse transcriptase to enter enter inside your T helper cell. Now outer that protein capsid it will not able to enter inside our cell only the genetic matrix RNA single stranded RNA which is now having two strands and along with that reverse transcriptase enzyme will also enter. Now this is RNA and this is your cell, T helper cell, our cell have the genetic material DNA. So it is not possible for the virus to directly incorporate into our nucleus and can take the machinery of the whole cell. It's not possible. So that's why what happened with the help of this reverse transcriptase, it will undergo reverse transcription. So it will undergo, normally what is transcription? Transcription means DNA undergo a process that is transcription. What is transcription and translation? You will get in genetics, molecular basis of inheritance in botany. You will get the whole process of transcription and translation. But for now, just remember, this is the process of transcription. In the transcription process, what happened? DNA produced the RNA. Now, in case of this virus, the genetic material is RNA. It is going to have this uh, reverse transcriptase enzyme, which is also have entered. So with the help of this reverse transcriptase, this RNA form the DNA. Once it formed the DNA, what happened? It can directly, suppose this is the DNA. This is the viral DNA now. Now this viral DNA, it will enter inside our nucleus. And once it enter inside our nucleus, it will get incorporated, that will get blended with our genetic material, that is DNA. Now DNA and DNA, the viral DNA and our DNA, that will get matched. Now, once it get matched, what happened? Now, our cell will not produce our own protein. Now, what will happen? That viral DNA will cause the production of the viral protein. That viral protein will be the protein capsid. All of the organelles of the virus it will produce. And after that, inside our cell, the viral progenies will be produced. Number of, see, now this, 
DNA, viral DNA undergo normal transcription to produce mRNA and after that this mRNA undergo translation process and it will produce a protein. So this way number of protein capsids will be formed GP120 above antigenic site that will be also formed and along with that the viral RNA obviously their genetic material that will be also entered along with that reverse transcriptase. So at one period of time what happened this cell our T helper cell that will burst and a number of viral progenies that will come outside and then also our body will not going to understand that what is that why because it is going to have the same non-antigenic covering around that GP120 and gradually what happened inside your body the immune system will start to get weaker and the T helper cell level will start to decrease. So this is the mode of infection, how actually it will infect our cell our end, it will start to completely weaken our uh, immunity. So that's why this virus is also known as human immuno, human immunodeficiency virus. Why it is called as human immunodeficiency virus? Because at one period of time, the T helper cell that will start to decrease, okay? And also with that disease, we generally use a term that is in diagnosis, what we can check. This is actually one test. What is the test? That is ELISA test. ELISA means enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. So in that immuno, uh, that means ELISA's test, that is enzyme linked immunosorbent assay, what we are going to check, is it possible that you can able to detect that virus? No. Why? Because outside it has already been covered by a non-antigenic site. So that's why in the test also it is not possible that your uh, test will be positive. Okay. But it does not mean that you don't have that virus. Virus can be present. That virus that will be just protected by the non-antigenic covering. So that's why in ELISA test what is actually detected uh, in the blood in the blood they will check the antibody here antibody is checked in the immune system our immune system whenever that and that gp120 covering whenever it shed actually in that period of time what happened our immune system get activated it may be not able to kill that virus but at least some amount of antibody will be produced and if that individual can able to understand that means immune system can understand this is an antigen then against that antigen immune system will produce the antibody and that antibody will be present in the blood so the blood the antibody against that antigen hiv the virus the body will start to produce the antibody and that antibody immunoglobulin will be present in the blood so this way in ELISA test the blood antibody or the blood immunoglobulin is tested diagnosed or checked whether that individual have this HIV uh, virus or not but when we can call that this individual is HIV positive sometime in ELISA test it can be given as uh, HIV negative too but in this HIV negative does not mean that that individual do not have that HIV virus what can happen in HIV negative suppose first of all that individual have that infection but that go for the testing had the ELISA test and after that it was uh, result as negative but this negative mean that maybe the immune system is not able to find the helper T cell or the helper T cell is sufficiently present in the body unaffected. Then the result will be negative. So that's why once that individual is uh, suppose uh, taken that is HIV negative then after one month or two months once again the uh, test should be prescribed and it is prescribed also and after two three months maybe enough helper T cells will be decreased and the immune system will completely get weakened and after that that individual will develop HIV positive in that HIV positive condition what happened the helper T cell this helper T cells will efficiently goes down it will completely get decreased then only the test will be positive 
okay so that is about the test after that let's just see about their uh, symptoms so what are the symptoms the symptoms that will include very mild symptom which can actually be the symptom of some other diseases also what are the symptoms first of all fever fever some uh, sometime loss of appetite will occur loss of appetite or it can be weight loss okay so these are the primary symptoms of that disease so first of all that individual may have very mild fever maybe due to suppose um, the environment or the climate change also that individual can have fever so due to that condition the individual will not go for the testing or loss of appetite or uh, weight loss is not taken seriously so that's why this type of uh, symptoms is not enough to tell you that that individual is suffering from HIV so that's why that test is actually been conducted ELISA test in ELISA test also very often the individual comes negative the result becomes negative because enough number of helper T cells is not decreased until it become positive already the immune system get uh, completely weakened and helper T cells completely get destroyed. So after some time what will happen that individual that virus is killing just the helper T cell but helper T cell if it is decreased what will happen to that individual? There is no specific symptom for only uh, that AIDS disease typically. He will have all kinds of diseases now. He will be uh, now susceptible to all kinds of diseases. He can suffer from TB. He can suffer from from pneumonia he can suffer from even cancer so this type of symptom that will include later on TB in India basically the people they're suffering from the disease AIDS they die due to TB or cancer a specific type of cancer can occur this is skin cancer or he can suffer from any kinds of disease that means maybe that individual suffer from only a simple uh, disease that is just cough and cold and after that he will not recover from it gradually those diseases will increase and increase and ultimately that individual will die see for that disease hiv virus that hiv virus is a single stranded rna virus so that's why and also around the gp120 which is a antigenic site which can give you enough information to the immune system that it is antigen and against that antigen you have to produce the antibody antibody will be not produced why around the gp120 there is a non-antigenic covering so without informing the immune system it destroys the complete immune system by killing the helper t cells and helper t cells burst new HIV uh, virus will come it affect more helper T cells and gradually the helper T cells will start to decline in your body so immune system uh, completely get weakened and that after that the individual will suffer from TB or cancer or any kinds of diseases okay so that is about the disease viral disease a very dangerous disease that is HIV AIDS so internationally there is a day which has been observed as a AIDS day what is AIDS day on which day it is uh, not celebrated it is observed this is 1st December in 1st December the day this 1st December is called as AIDS day and what is the symbol of AIDS so actually see this is just a red ribbon red coiled ribbon so this is the symbol of AIDS AIDS day is observed on 1st December so that is about AIDS the disease virus you have to know all of it in human and uh, human health and disease another chapter after the human health and disease we have to see in detail what is about the virus how actually it infect the cell all of these things we will once again discuss in the next chapter after that the next type of viral disease see the next viral disease is third type first viral disease we have discussed second that is the HIV AIDS hepatitis B and after that the third viral disease we have seen that is genital herpes herpes also 
uh, actually is one type of viral disease. The causative organism is type 2 herpes simplex virus. Remember, this is herpes simplex virus. What is about the symptoms? The symptom will include the watery blisters on the genitals. In case of female, this is happening in the female, uh, in the labia majora or labia minora, the uh, region can have small, small watery blisters. And after that, those blisters, if it bursts, then it will go to the baby also and infect the baby's body as well as the organs too. What is the treatment? Treatment is Jovirex or Acyclovir. This uh, type of drugs are available for the treatment of that virus. This is not the deadly, as deadly as HIV or Hepatitis B. Next, the fourth type of viral disease is genital warts. In the word, the word wart means some small, small lumps. That lumps can appear. See, first of all, causative organism. What is that? HPV. This came a number of times. What is the full form of HPV? This is actually the causative organism of genital wart. What is that? Human papilloma virus. So what is the symptom? The symptom includes small, small lumps that appear on the external genitals in case of female. What is the treatment? Treatment is cryotherapy with liquid nitrogen. With liquid nitrogen, it is actually have some treatment. Cryotherapy is done. Alpha interferon will work against that virus as well as it can also have a laser surgery. So by this laser surgery or cryotherapy with liquid nitrogen or alpha interferon that can actually um, be the uh, some treatments that are available for genital warts. These are about the different type of viral disease. After that, the last disease we are going to see that is caused by protozoa. So the next type of disease we are going to see, this is protozoan disease. So what is that? Trichomoniasis is one disease. Here we will see only one disease and this is the last disease of the STD. What happens in trichomoniasis? Causative organism is trichomonas. This is a scientific name. So, causative organism is trichomonas vaginalis. This is the causative organism. In case of both male and female, the symptoms appear. The symptoms will include the inflammation of the mucous membrane of female. And if it is in case of male, this is including inflammation of the urethra. Next one, it can also have yellow discharge from the vagina as well as uh, that uh, vaginal discharge will have a specific odor, offensive odor. That is one indication or symptom of the disease. That protozoa uh, normally affect the organ that is the external genital. If the pH of the vagina that is normally is 3.5, if it uh, suppose changes and it becomes favorable for the protozoa, protozoa enters inside the uh, that system, the cervix region as well as the urethral region and after that it starts to multiply and once it multiply it starts to cause the disease and start to release that yellow discharge from the vagina. Now, what is the treatment available for the disease? That is metronidazole. So, that is the, the basic drug which is available for that protozoa. Yes, protozoa disease, so available drugs are there. For bacterial disease, the different type of uh, drugs are available like tetracycline, ampicillin, erythromycin, penicillin. This type of drugs are available. In case of hepatitis B and HIV AIDS, there is no treatment or drugs available. In case of genital herpes and genital warts, some drugs are available but they are also not effective if in later phases or in the last phases if it has been asked. Then the last type of disease is the protozoan disease, trichomoniasis, where the treatment is available. It is also not life-threatening. The uh, treatment is available if in normal time or in the earlier stage it has been treated, then obviously that individual can cure, can be cured from that protozoan disease. So these are all about the uh, variety.
varieties of STDs, their causative organism symptom as well as their uh, treatments. You have to know that there are varieties of diseases are there. Though it is not included in NCRT, a number of diseases have come in um, medical exams, varieties of medical exams like neat names. This came, so that's why I have given. And in some other books, if you find some other diseases also, you can include here. Like lots of fungal diseases are also here. I have not included those viral disease, bacterial, then protozoa, fungal, all the types of diseases you have to see. So up to that, we have completed STD. Thank you.